You need an about page that talks about you, what inspires you, how you work, how you do things. And then you need a contact page for them to get in touch with you. If you want to sell things, you add that too. But you really only need three pages on your website. Yes, ma'am. How do we contact you? Um, I'm going to give you a business card. I'll put a pile of business cards up here if you want a business card. Yes, ma'am. How much should we expect to pay? Um, I charge $150 a page. And then it's $150 for your name uh, for the website you pay yearly? Yes, plus you pay the person. The I use Squarespace for almost all of my clients. That's another thing. WordPress requires a lot of maintenance. It requires you to update the website, things like that. I don't know a lot of artists that want to spend time on their website like that, so we use Squarespace. Squares, Squarespace? Yep, Squarespace, and it's squarespace.com, and you can go straight to them, and you can link it so that you can get a, um, a Google domain from them, and it, it will put your name at your website address, and you can pretty much do everything through them. And Yes? Talk about why Wix is not a good website. Yeah, do not use Wix. If you're currently using Wix, try something else. Weebly is an okay free platform. Do we do GoDaddy and just make it your own? So you could. Their SEO, their search engine, is not as good. That's why I like Squarespace. All of the Google is built into Squarespace's platform. So it's another website platform. It's like a GoDaddy or a Wix or a Weebly or Shopify or any of those. If you have 80 plus items that you want to put on your website, Shopify is a good option. If you have a ton, a big catalog, a ton of products to sell, then that would be a good platform for you. But if not, I like Squarespace. Um, if you are, it, yes, ma'am. Oh, hi. Yeah. Uh, I've sold on eBay, other items, not uh -huh. and I've sometimes gotten, um, Less money than I should have on shipping. Do you have any idea on the shipping of pictures? Or so I don't know a lot about shipping pictures. I know that it is a, a totally different, complex animal. Um, but that you can. I have planned for another demo. Good. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Okay, I'm, I have. Um, and on the agenda for, um, I still want to go over um, some other business aspects for others, uh, shipping, um, framing, and wiring, and that kind of stuff, um, as well as I thought maybe we would do, um, besides maybe uh, taxing and pricing your that kind of stuff, you know, a little bit of the accounting kind of stuff. So those are still other topics. So what I thought is we would do two business-ended uh, type of things and then the rest creative each year. That That is my plan. So next year, I have already asked Tammy to come back <laughs> next year to do merchandising your product. That is how to photograph your art so that you can put it online so it doesn't get stolen, and how to photograph your art so that it's more appealing, um, as well as how to put your art out there at your sales, like art in the park and whatnot, so that it's more appealing to people, so that they'll buy more of it. So that's what I've asked her to do for us for next year. Anybody works with PayPal, what does Etsy work with? Uh, Etsy also works with PayPal. And it will also take people's credit cards. I do do my own tax. Marissa was next. Yes. And I've learned the hard way how to do it. I've learned double boxing is really the best of those because I do glass and pottery. And so, yeah, for me, a loss is a, is a loss is a loss. Yes. So what I found is that um, if, you, if you have an Etsy site, shipping is cheaper than going through the post office or UPS or any of the others because you get a discount with Etsy. Um, so I use Etsy. I'm still on Etsy. Do they have the suppliers? Say that again? Uh, <laughs> you know. You know, that's really funny. Um, actually, the way I do it is I use old boxes that I already have, and I wrap them in brown paper so that they still look nice. It's, a, it's the most cost-effective way there still is to do it. 
I've got so a question about uh, uh, Pinterest. Uh -huh. uh, I went on Pinterest, I put something on it, uh -huh. and I was overwhelmed by everyone sending me things on it that I, I didn't want to. Uh, no. okay. So I, I learned that, I, but you know, it was confusing because I wanted them to know about me, right. and they decided to tell everything about everybody else. So I, and and <laughs> I was overwhelmed. Care, by that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so what do you do? So when you're on Pinterest, you yes. the best way to do it if you get overwhelmed by that is to look for what you are interested in. So use the search bar at the top and just type what you're looking for. Don't even bother with the rest of it. Just I want today I want to see things that are indigo or shells or whatever. Um, Go for it that way and just type in your topic at the top and then you'll get results that pertain to what you're yeah, interested in. Yes, I need business cards right now. Okay. Let's be good. Here. I was wondering what this is. Thank you. I knew what she wanted. Marissa, did you have a question? Yeah, well, I was just curious when you said um, like, you have a lot of things to sell oh, in your website. Shopify, yeah. yeah. What would you say is like an appropriate amount for what you're talking about the other? So I would say that you want what do you what's your medium? Um, oil paints and okay. Okay, so you, if you're doing multiple mediums, you need to have a pretty good representation of your work in each medium. So if you feel that your work can be represented by eight pieces, awesome. Put up eight pieces. If you feel that you need 20 or 30 to accurately show what you're capable of doing, put up as, put up as many as you need to accurately represent what you do, no more than that. Because it's nice to sometimes have a sold out sticker. Mm -hmm. People like that. I'm buying from an artist that has something sold out. That means other people are interested in this artist. That's what I want in my house. It's like a reference for myself. Yep, absolutely. But that sold out is on Pinterest and all on your own website? Uh, on your own website. What she's talking about is your own website. Yeah. How do you link Pinterest to your own website? So you pin the images from your website into Pinterest. Uh, to so download it there. Yes. And every platform now, every website platform works very well with Pinterest, that you can do that. You can upload the images to your own website or to your Etsy shop and click straight from that to your Pinterest account. And that is how, um, that's how you should be doing it. But you can sell through Pinterest or not? You can, but it's, it's not worth selling yourself. If you want to hire someone to do that part of it for you, then it's worth it. But to try and figure out how to do, you get very little for that. Your time is better spent painting or doing right. that medium. Right. One last thing. Yeah. You haven't mentioned blogs. Yeah. And uh, I have a blog that you I do. Have, however, uh, it seems to be locked in. I can't change it now or whatever. But, okay. but it, was, it was a free blog that, that Google had. Yeah, and, like a blog spot. Yeah. Or and, blogger. And you can you can link to that. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. If you if that's what you want to use for your website, that's totally fine. Okay. But it's hard to sell on that. So I guess today I was more focused on selling online than necessary. But if you want to post, same rules apply. Be very consistent with how often you post. If you always post on the 15th, Google will like you more and show you to more people. Is your own website a better choice or somebody's other? It depends on what you're looking for. If you are in a space that has a kind of niche, your own website might be better. If you're in a space where people are just looking for it all the time and they're going to an Etsy or an Amazon marketplace, that's the place where you need to be. It's more about your own niche. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. So, okay, if you have like, on your own personal website, just like showing what you do, like maybe 25 things, no prints or anything like that, then are you sending people to like Shopify from your website to buy more prints? So, if you're working not having that on your website? So, Shopify is your own website. Shopify is a platform just like Squarespace or Wix or any of that. People can buy from you directly there. It's about the same price. 
Um, it's just a really good e-commerce platform that is it's user friendly. But it's not like um, you don't have to maintain it as much. So if you if that's um, okay, if that's what the, pur the purpose is to sell on your website. Yeah. You're showing um, just examples of like all new mediums. Uh -huh. so maybe three or four different types of art. Yep. And plus prints. Is that all in one space? Like, and what would that number be that would be appropriate? Like, just, like you know. Yep. You absolutely. Questions? So you would organize it like a store. You have categories of your art, just like you would have categories on a big giant Lowe's.com. So they, they're not selling power tools right next to windows. So you're not going to sell your products right next to one. You're going to put them into categories and those website platforms will help you to do that. So you could say this is a wood carving room basically for all of that work. This is a painting room for all of that work, and it's it's organized in that way. I've seen other um, artists who have like like their portrait page or landscape mm -hmm. page or um, you know a plein air page or yep. scenes and stuff, still life. So they do that because they don't necessarily want you to compare one with the next with the next. You you want to organize it in a way that makes sense for your customer's brain. So you you want to give them the choices that. If they're looking for a landscape, they're only going to look for a landscape. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes? Could you just briefly explain MailChimp? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So MailChimp is an email repository that holds on to your customers' emails. So you would make your list and upload that information into MailChimp. That's, um, there's others, but I like that one. Again, it's MailChimp. It's in your. Um, uh huh. That's fine. Um, so it's basically a repository, and they track everything. So that's what I was saying. They they track how many people actually open the email. If you send a hundred and you get thirty of them to open it, that's a really good open rate. By the way, by the way, that's great if you can get thirty percent of the people to open your emails, and then if you can get another thirty percent of the people to click from the email into your website or wherever you're driving them, the sign up page for Art in the Park, whatever that is. What, when you are writing an email for your customer, another good rule of thumb, one action. You want your email, your customer to take one action per email. So either sign up for Art in the Park or go to your website or come visit you or one thing. You give them too many choices and they just don't know what to do and they close it. Is just, MailChimp pretty easy to navigate? It is very easy okay. to navigate. Um, both Squarespace and MailChimp are they like work with the artist for you. We, Stony, had we thought about using MailChimp? Is that who we were using? Um, we can use that for fine art. Okay. Online, that's an option, and the newsletter, everything can be sent right to the website, and people can go to the website to sign up for it. So all that will be available. Awesome. So that is perfect. That's it. That's what you guys are going to end up with. Yes? Do you get any fraud, you know, with emails? I mean, people responding in a negative way. So usually no, because you've gotten that email address from somebody either at an art in the park or another, maybe they visited you or whatever. So chances are if someone gave you their email, there's very little of that. So like on my website, I have a, a box at the bottom where I give people something for signing up for my email list. And there I get a little bit more, but still it's very low. It's less than 1%. So it's it's pretty good. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. OK, so if you hate technology as an artist, and all this stuff is exhausting and draining to you, how much does it cost to hire somebody to do all of this for you? To do every yeah. single thing to have to do. I want to start saving, so. Okay. Um, so it depends. It's a, it's a buy is as you need, basically, basically consumption. So if you want three things, you're going to pay less than if you need somebody to be on 47 different places. Um, so it is that I will absolutely talk to you if that is truly where your mind is, that you genuinely don't want to do any of it. Um, but yeah, so if, if you just don't like social media, I or people like me will just do the social media and you can maintain your own website because it's easy. Once it's up, it's up. Or I will set up your website for you and you never have to talk to me again if you don't want to. And you want to do social media and you like Facebook and talking to your customers, that's totally fine too. So it's kind of a, a take what you need.
basically. And that's that's how I work. That's how everyone like me works. There's groups that I'm in that I talk to other freelancers that do this kind of work, and we're all the same kind of mindset. Like, can we say thank you, and then anybody who has other questions can stay? Because we want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very informational. Thank you. Like this other young lady.